Hello and welcome to Conscious TV. My name is Eleanor Gilbert and today in the studio with us we have Dr. Claudio Naranjo. Thank you for coming and um, I would like to give just a very rapid and brief description of a little bit of the history of who you are. Um, so you are an MD, a psychiatrist, a gestalt therapist, an Enneagram teacher, you are an educator, a very prolific writer, you've written more than 20 books. You're also a central figure in the human potential and new age movement in the 60s and 70s. You're a disciple of uh, Fritz Perl and uh, you taught at Esalen in California. You were also a student of um, the spiritual teacher Oscar Ichazo. And um, during your lifetime you also experimented with shamanism, Sufism, Buddhism. You became a teacher, a spiritual teacher yourself and uh, you led a group of spiritual seekers in uh, California under the name of SAT, Seekers Af After Truth. But most of all, you know, from my personal and direct experience of you, is that you really are a man dedicated to the uh, spiritual, and spiritual development and evolution of humankind, which I know it's, it's, it's a lot, but mm -hmm. um, there you are. So yes, yes, that describes me. Um, particularly during the recent years, I feel I'm working more intending to my work to change society than people individually. Now, you know. when we talked um, yesterday, just initially, you mentioned that uh, society, as we know it, is in a really bad state. Mm. Could you say more a little a a about that? Why you make such a statement? Uh, why this something smells rotten in the land of Denmark now that Hamlet is playing in London right <laughs> <laughs> um, well uh, we don't have a sustainable um, way of life we are eating uh, up our environment uh, um, everything is in crisis uh, not just this not just financial crisis the ideas underlying this financial crisis uh, uh, a, a whole paradigm about life um, now I think the world has been there's been something wrong with the world for a very very long time only that the situation becomes critical in the sense of dangerous. Uh, Buddha and so many other enlightened beings of the past had that perspective that everybody is as if in a dream, as if asleep. The truth of life, the first noble truth of Buddhism, the truth of suffering, is a little bit like uh, the discovery that Freud was going to do make later of universal neurosis. Mm -hmm. People are uh, emotionally disturbed and they don't know it. Yes. People are crazy and like a crazy person doesn't know he is crazy. A madman doesn't know he's a madman. So society as a whole behaves that way. And so there has been that knowledge and there was even a knowledge in the olden times of uh, not only a fall from original uh, original harmony or uh, paradise or whatever you call it, yes. but a gradual fall through the ages that would culminate in the age of iron, the Kali Yuga, where then there would be a turning back to the golden age. Um, why the world is in this shape? Uh, according to Buddha, out of an excessive desiring that was uh, based on blindness mm -hmm. or not understanding something right. Um, when Freud it tried to interpret the wrongness as so the source of suffering, he brought in another factor, not just unconsciousness, which is like saying blindness, but um, kind of straight jacket on our na animal nature. Right. Um, as if civilization is a police system to make us good and not bad, as if we need to be policed because we might be bad. That's has been called Freud's pessimism. Right. Yes. And uh, 
I say that uh, in addition to seeing to the, to the truth of ignorance and the undeniable truth of, of um, conflict between what is natural and what and the f forces of culture or the civilization, I say that we should look at the patriarchal nature of civilization. Civilization is a problem from the very beginning, 6,000 years ago, more or less. Uh, what happened was that there was a shift of power and uh, the men uh, took over uh, not only power but took possession of women and children. The institution of pater familias is one of the man owns the wife as a slave owner owns yes. slaves. And the ownership uh, is a dehumanizing uh, influence. In and, fact, uh, actually, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I mean, in, in this book, in your latest book, uh, Healing Civilization, you do explain uh, precisely how we went to such a society to yes. and what is actually needed now for healing uh, civilization. You, you want me to answer that question, what is needed for healing? Yes. Yes, if it's true that the problem is patriarchy, or uh, I'd like to say it, that the, the core problem is the patriarchal mind, a kind of mind in which, I, well, let me make a parenthesis to say we have three brains yes. now, neurobiology points out, the reptilian or instinctual brain, which is like the child within, beyond culture. Then there's a mother brain, the midbrain with emotional brain, um, which uh, makes us able to treat another as ourselves and see another as, a, as another self. A source of love is a mammalian relation right. of animals to with their, um, how do you call it, the, the, the cubs, the, 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 the the mother with the cubs. Yes, the mothers with the, with, yeah, with the babies. The mothers with the babies, with the, yes. yes. And, uh, and then there's uh, the, the, the intellectual brain the, that makes us homo sapiens. Right. But we call ourselves as a species homo sapiens sapiens. Right. Almost as if we are especially proud of having this human brain that thinks. And uh, to the extent that we have um, put too much emphasis on intelligence over the heart, or over the instinctual organistic wisdom, the animal wisdom, yes. we have become less than human. Uh, we have, in some sense, we can become worse than animals in our destructiveness. Uh, because even an, our intellect is not an intellect that uh, can be wise culturally. Uh, wisdom is not something that any school claims to teach. Uh, only uh, the, uh, it schools teach information. Teaching it has to do with transmission of information. It's a very low kind of intelligence that is worshipped, let's say, through uh, emphasis. It's um, the in technological intelligence, instrumental intelligence, instru the intelligence to get things. So uh, we have, as a species, um, not done very well in uh, with patriarchy. The patriarch be the emphasis of the father brain. Yes. The intellectual brain is like the father, who commands inside our mind, of, in, in our family. But uh, one thing is to command; another thing is to overcommand, to become a tyrant. Right. So we have an inner tyranny in which we have become slave owners of ourselves. Yes. And uh, society also operates as a kind of uh, authority system of, of enslavement. Of even if we proudly say we have left behind the time where there were slaves, but the labor market functions very much like a yes. like a slave market. Especially in third world countries. Yes, uh, in Africa. Um, yes, or India, or yeah. um, although they're not necessarily third world countries, but developing countries. So. Yes. So there's still so, that kind of patriarchal so, uh, so I say that the patriarchal mind is a mind where the three brains don't operate as an integrated system, 
but in which the inner father is a tyrant, the mother is just as subordinate uh, mm -hmm. as women have been in, since the days of Eve, where she, Eve is a culprit, and therefore she must serve a Adam. And, uh, and the third party being the snake, right. uh, the, sn the child, the inner child, uh, the r reptilian brain, the, right. it's nature the within us. It's, uh, the civilization goes against nature and right. desires and doesn't trust spontaneity, doesn't trust, like animals, trust their own uh, appetites. And uh, their appetites have a wisdom. So we have pretended to try to live beyond the rule of nature and squished nature within us right. and squished the inner child that has its own preferences. So um, if this is true that we have, we are all participate in this kind of mentality which is the rule of one brain over the whole territory, yes. one brain speaking for ourselves when it's only a kind of island within the psyche then uh, the remedy is not just something so vague as democracy or something uh, like um, return to matriarchy. Right. Uh, in a, if, if you take this threefold scheme, father, mother, child, which is echoed in our inner in structure, then uh, a, a, a healthy society would be one where this balance inwardly in each individually, individual between his three inner parts or, or persons and where there's balance in the family, there's no, no dominance of one or the other, no enslavement of the children to the position of um, uh, somebody, somebody who's not to be heard, who yes. has no voice. But how yeah. do you propose to do that? I think it cannot be done um, if you want to change the consciousness of the adult, adult world. Right, uh, that's what religions have tried to do, that's what psychotherapy has, to some extent. Psychotherapy not always has had society in mind, but in his last years Freud thought that one day the state will take on psychoanalysis, will offer psychoanalysis to everybody. And if you think of it in a broad way, not, not in the narrow sense of psychoanalysis, yes. that would be a very legitimate process, uh, helping human development psycho-spiritual development, but um, I think uh, it can't be done. The world is too large and too different and uh, politically um, divided. Uh, only uh, the, div the prevention of the development of a patriarchal mind could be tackled. A preventive education, an education that keeps us from falling from paradise so far. Right, okay. We fall, we fall into this world from the moment we're born, and we keep falling through childhood by being contaminated with a sick society through the people who love us most, uh, who, who, because our parents are part of that so society. So if you say that um, psycho psychology hasn't, or psychotherapy hasn't actually achieved its aim to heal adult society because after all we've had for over a hundred years we've had available psychology, psychotherapy and all kinds of different various techniques to do with the body etc etc and yet it seems to me that society seems to be even sicker. So yes. what, what is it, what can we do, what can, what can be done you know, to protect our children, to even foster that inner child within ourselves yes. that is spontaneous, that is curious, yes. that loves to seek, that loves others as well. I, th I, I don't think more education is the answer if by that we mean more education of the kind we have. Right. Because more we have a kind of education which is kind of brainwashing. Yeah. It's an education designed for the market, a designed for um, production, not designed for human growth. There's no self-awareness, no no attempt to use education for self-knowledge or for self-liberation, uh, for enlightenment, or for wisdom. And would you say that this is true across all civilizations, all, yes, all, yes. all countries? All, all countries. Of course, there are cases like Finland that are brought up as less, less problematic. Right. 
but um, uh, the, as some sociologists have said, so the aim of uh, the aim of education is to reproduce society, to make another generation like ourselves. <coughs> it's not been questioned that right. we ourselves are the problem. We carry we carry the infection. Yes, we carry the patriarchal mind. So education should be geared for transformation of the individual and for transformation of society by making people whole but not not, not addressing only the intellectual self but yes. involving an education of the heart and involving a liberation like Gandhi when he succeeded in the liberation of India he says this is only a beginning liberation should be now the task of education for every yes. individual in your book, you talk about um, also consciousness as being a fourth love, uh, a description of love. You, you describe the three qualities that we have, mother love, father love, and child love, but also conscious, the consciousness being the fourth force. And, um, you know, it seems to me that that's what really, what we're, what we're talking about here is to enable people to be more conscious by perhaps integrating those three aspects of love. I, was, I wonder if you could say a little bit more about that. Yes. Uh, consciousness is the great uh, way for growth. Uh, even if we want to grow in love, mm -hmm. it's consciousness through which we can do it. Uh, normally, people who say they, are, they love uh, don't know the difference between uh, really loving and uh, pretending to love because they've been brought up to be good b good boys, good girls. Right. Uh, it's a kind of love that's part of the culture. Yes. It's part of a role. Yes. And uh, people sometimes in their growth process discover that this is a part of a role and then feel an emptiness behind. Yes. I don't really love. And that's the beginning of being able to uh, develop real love to, to realize you don't have it. Right. You, you need an aspiration for it. It's almost uh, near sanctity to be able to say, I am not able to love. It's, it's a deep confession that many people never come to in their lives. Even so one needs to c yeah. have the, an awareness to go behind the falsification of love to something right. real. Also, um, if you say, like in the Christian uh, culture as a or, or in, uh, Christian history, if you have an injunction to love, mm -hmm. you must love, love yourself, love your neighbor as yourself, love God above all. Um, to the extent that it's only an injunction, it's not enough to be able to do it. It's uh, not if, if you intensify the injunction. Yes. It's like to saying somebody be spontaneous when you're trying to take a picture. Yes. You cannot deliberately be spontaneous. Yes. But uh, love flows from emptiness. Mm -hmm. Love flows from a kind of neutral quality of awareness when people through life, through ripening, or sometimes through a spiritual practice, have uh, some ability to renounce themselves to go beyond the known, to go into, um, to become neutral, to become yes. objective. Right, okay. Um, so that, so ob self-awareness and self-knowledge uh, are based on objectivity and uh, well, being able to be re re contact reality. And uh, so this, out of this background of yes of not uh, attempting neither to love to not, or not, not love, just to be. From there, love can arise. Right, so it's almost like what you're saying is really be quiet and still so be that you can actually still. sense your own love. That is a natural thing that we all yes. are born with. Yes, but just by doing nothing you can begin to think, to feel a kind of warm peace. Right. A kind of inner well-being that that's can be a foundation for loving others. For loving mm. others. 
And when it comes to consciousness, as we described earlier, as being the wrapper in a sense of, you know, the matriarchal, the patriarchal and the child values that we discussed earlier. Um, where are we from your perspective, given that you've spent your entire life, mm. you know, dedicated mm. to the improvement, to the evolution mm. of humankind? Where are we? Where are we? I would say that very, very long ago, before what's called the Neolithic, before we became sedentary and invented agriculture, we were we lived in a kind of filiarchy, mm -hmm. a child-centered world. We were like animals, anarchic. Each was a, had rule over himself or herself. Yes. Then we became a community. We became tribes. A society was born when, at the time of the Neolithic and agriculture. It was the feminine ingredient mm. that was inspired at the time of pottery and weaving and burying of the dead. We became human in some sense, and uh, then there was a kind of community government right. that could p maybe became group tyranny at some point, and had to be uh, that had to come to an end because the earth was getting hot, and it was not working to stay there, stay in the same old ways. And it seems that the men took over there, the men who were more the, the original scientists and more explore, exploratory. It seems that there was an act of taking over power because the myths tell us of like the slaying of Gorgon by Perseus, the, the paralyzing mother. It's, it's probably, the, it was perceived that there was a danger to being so overstable, right. and the men took charge, and that had a function at some point for survival. But we are now stuck in the obsoleteness of patriarchy for long, yes. and we've come into a time when uh, this obsoleteness uh, is what we call a crisis. Yes, it's a, it's a crisis of our old habits. That it it worked to be conquering for some time when there was more time, more place to, places to conquer. Uh, there were, it, yes. it was a work okay to spit in the ocean, as ocean can accommodate a lot of garbage. Yes. But now no, there is not no over there we can throw a garbage into. Uh, the, right. So we need a new, a new ethic and a new way of li life. Where are we? Uh, we are uh, we're in the times of the agony of patriarchy. The, when the, you have a system where that is threatened, uh, it's, uh, the, it's as if the disease intensifies. Yes. There's some military dictatorships in South America uh, where we're very much a reaction to the crisis, feeling we're losing control. Yes. Particularly after the New Age, after the 60s, when the youth voiced the uh, awareness, the popular awareness that something's wrong with the system, something's wrong with the world. At the time of the birth of the counterculture, that was very dangerous to the system. And the system has defended itself with the new conservatism and with new liberalism, with the, with the oppression, with persecution of the youth, yes. the increase of prisons, the criminalization of so many things. As if the system is, f because it's threatened, it intensifies. I think, but we, I don't think we can go much further. We, we not, cannot, uh, uh, it's like we are like a book, a ship that's sinking. Right. And then um, perhaps what we know at the individual level as a phenomenon of death and rebirth, right. which is the substance of so many legends and myths, and it's because it's the individual transformation is like that. Because so, that maybe that's what we are coming to uh, collectively, uh, the death of a culture, the death of a system, and the birth of uh, and something the birth new. Of something new, yes. So um, I'm conscious of the fact that we are actually uh, beginning to run out of time. And again, going back to Healing Civilization, your book, you are actually proposing to teach the teachers. Yes, greater. because we cannot have a new education or we cannot teach if we don't teach the teachers to 
to do something very different than what has been done by schools and universities. It's not a matter of teaching anymore. Yes. It's a matter of educating in the real sense, which is liberating and it's uh, nurturing. Nurturing, so perhaps... Nurturing people to be nurturing. Right, <coughs> okay, to really be more in touch with what's really true and real about all of us, about being a human being on this planet. Yes, only uh, consciousness can only be transmitted personally yes. through this teacher-student relation. Indeed, rather than something So that's, that you, you have to begin with the teachers. Right, okay. And you have programs uh, that are available for teachers to... Well, that's what I have contributed to the world, other than the big scheme about salvation through education. Wonderful. Other than that, yeah. my... Um, unintendedly, uh, I would say, my work has more and more led to the development of this program that can work with teachers, as it, can w as it has worked with therapists and with seekers. It uh, can, uh, can provide a, a very intense experience, a life-changing experience in a very short time. Okay. Ten days, right. once a year, for three years. Okay. That's the model. Ten, it's a, a, a three, three, three injections. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, I really appreciate you coming and spending time here at uh, Conscious TV. And, it's a um, privilege. Thank you, and thank you for con watching Conscious TV, and we'll see you again very soon. Thank you. Goodbye.